Hey everyone, I'm Mary Beth McGandrews from Dread Central, and I am very excited to be here today with Ryan J. Brown, the creator and writer of the new series, Wreck on Hulu. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm amazing. I um, am very excited to chat with you about your series because it is creepy and funny and disgusting already, and <laughs> I am very excited. So my first question for you is like, cruise ships. Mm. Uh, incredible slasher location that has not been utilized nearly enough so mm. how did you kind of like arrive upon this setting and like and expand it into the series well I I couldn't believe that nobody has set anything on a cruise ship I, I mean I suppose we've had like a uh, ghost ship but I mean yeah it ghost like, ship like cruise but... line with like people on board no yeah. um Everything began with the cruise industry, really. Um, it's so funny. Like, it's I have to be so careful what I say because they just love to sue. It's like their hobby, I think. Um, it's like they get off on it. But as an industry, it's something. There are part parts of the industry um, that are terrifying, and um, so many of those ships they are sweat ships and they are scary places. And it just made so much sense to me. Um, there's a website. Everyone should go take a look. Actually. Maybe you shouldn't take a look. It's called cruiseshipdeaths.com. Oh and it's God, proper, no. Yeah, it's a proper organization that tracks um, crime on board cruise ships because so much happens, so much goes unreported. Um, I think, I can't remember what the figure is now, but at the time of writing, when I first started, this was a couple of years ago, they were like 300. It was like in the last five years, there have been 300 disappearances. And those weren't like people jumping overboard and people seeing that and it being recorded these were just like vanished gone um yeah crazy and they do nothing to kind of rectify that there are these terrible stories out there and they've, they've had every opportunity to install things that would make it you know if someone jumped overboard they would know immediately and they they just want to save money and they're not interested so it's just an industry that's really uh scary to me personally um and it seemed like the perfect location oh yeah well it's so funny because i've been getting on tiktok i've been getting cruise life people who work on cruises talking about like their experiences and it's so and it was so funny watching this after what like obviously very different but at the same time like you get those dynamics from what i have experienced just via tiktok Mm. about especially like worker interpersonal relationships Mm. and dramas and clips on ships which I thought was so funny because it feels like high school but with adults literally there are like (laughs) cliques cliques and hierarchies social hierarchies there are um in the show you you meet one of the mafias they are called mafias I didn't make that up for the show where kind of certain ethnic groups they stick together and you understand why they have to watch out for each other on board because some of the hierarchies they are they are there's a big racial element it's all legit it's all real um and it's like it's yeah there's just so much there I, I kind of wreck is really the tip of the iceberg I couldn't get everything in there yeah we need like 20 seasons um yeah scary but what's so funny is though you probably in those tiktoks you probably get like happy kind of like this is my room on the cabin oh like, yeah they're like and everyone has sex with everybody and we're drinking yeah. all the time it's not the like horrendous like worker no. violations going on with like no. obviously no. underrepresented and marginalized groups that are That's working in like thing. the worst yeah it really is the thing there is almost like if you're a performer on board you kind of have a status on there and so t- it tends to be the performers you see doing these videos and they kind of have a nicer room and um, yeah looked after um and they have all access a lot of a lot of oh, so I have to be so careful they have a lot of access as to where they go and yeah they can go anywhere whereas other people on board you kind of you're below so, and you'll remain below until you know you did get you off the ship. do a ton of research or did you have experience working on a ship like mm. this before so I know a lot of people that work on board a lot of okay performers. and yeah lots of research lots of time on okay. ship death. Um, I should be getting money to promote that website actually. I was gonna <laughs> I mean, say, like you <laughs> but... Yeah, lots of time on there. There are some um yeah, really scary stories out there. Um yeah, yeah, I I have never had never worked on one. Um thankfully. I almost did, but um yeah, life could have been very different. I may not be here now. Um, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we actually but, almost filmed on a cruise ship but it kind of got down to the wire and we were like look we need to know like can we and then they read oh. the script 
Um, oh, no. I'm not sure we send them all the scripts, but they kind of quickly realized it wasn't a, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been great PR. Um, uh, I think they thought it was going to be kind of a fun, campy summer vacation aboard a cruise ship, not kind of about class conflict and yeah, kind of um, exploitation. It's quite funny. So in the end, we had to build uh, the cruise ship, which was fun. Oh, that's wild. Oh my God. Well, I want to hear also about how you picked our our, sla our slasher mask slash costume, because I mm. feel like we get, everyone's talking about the duck and we see yeah. the duck and it is a great slasher costume, but also it's very terrifying. Those dead, like those dead eyes. There's nothing take the, there. the campiness of it and make it truly mm. horrifying. So I wanted mm. to hear kind of how you came, where you came to the duck. There were some very funny. So we we had a, multiple versions of the duck. Actually, to begin with, it wasn't a duck. It was a porpoise, and um, there, was no way, there was no way that that wouldn't be creepy. We had had to still pass as a kind of family mascot, and the, the porpoise was just one of the worst things I've ever seen. And the duck, there were a lot of iterations of the duck. We were there were some really scary, scary versions. We found a middle ground, I think, where like he's okay. terrifying. So you could picture him on a in a in a theme park or. Um, yeah, yeah, he's he's so funny. People really love the duck, and actually, it's mad because he's really only in the first couple of episodes. He um, he's kind oh, of the first piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Um, in total, I think he's only in the show for like five minutes, so he kind of does a Hannibal. But that's the thing. best slasher villain, I feel like. You know what I mean? Like they appear for like they're like iconic and they're barely in it, yeah, but you always remember it. It's always it's yeah. I mean like slashers, man. No, no, I was gonna say he kind of appears throughout, and you're never sure whether or not. It's just the mascot. But overall, he, he's really not in it that often. But people are like, a lot of people in the UK, at least, they the, the critics only kind of watch the first episode. And if you uh -huh. did just watch the first, you would assume that maybe yeah. this is you know, with a duck killing people for six episodes straight. So that <laughs> um, by the time they get to the end, they're like, oh, OK. OK, <laughs> it's, about, it's a show about like dismantling a uh, capitalist structure that's not anything to do with a killer duck. but it's a journey. <laughs> and I, I love that. I love that kind of like one, two, like it's a slasher. It's actually this. I love that. Cause I think that's what horror is so good at is kind of like giving yeah. you that misdirection. Mm -hmm. And I want to, are you, are you, do, do you consider this horror? Like, are you a horror person? Yes. A big horror person. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, Rex often described as a comedy horror and I'm, I kind of, I'm more inclined to just call it darkly comic horror I don't know why okay. comedy horror yeah. often you feel like big outrageous humor and I don't think Rex mm -hmm. is that I think it's a little more sensitive and dry probably than, than sensitive and dry is a horrible description for anything <laughs> it's like uh, a little person with psoriasis um but no oh it, it, it it kind of um comedy horror yeah punches a, a different image to I think what the show is but yeah yeah it's a funny one Comedy horror with a duck killing people for six episodes. I don't know if that's what Wreck is. I think it's more than that. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. I think it is much more. Like, there are, it is funny and a little bit ridiculous at moments, but it mm. is much more, like, fa found family a little bit. Like, and that's again, it's such a, such a queer show, horror show. We love that. And it's, like, all of these queer people coming together and dismantling, like, structures. Mm. And it's just, like, oh, that's exactly that was what, what I wanted. I, want. I wanted yeah. to create something that's kind of hopefully empowering by the end. Um, yeah. And I wanted there to be a message there about like, you look what happens when we come together, um, people from all backgrounds, queers and non-queers, when we come together and unite, we are unstoppable. And that was what I wanted the takeaway to be. I mean, the ending's pretty bleak as well. There's a lot of trauma, um, but Overall, yeah, that was what I wanted. I wanted, I wanted that. Oh, I'm spoiling the whole thing. Actually, I should stop talking. To you. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for chatting with me about Rack. This is please, thank you.